This is what Boko Haram told me. If you really want to get to paradise, this, they say, is such an easy thing to do. It goes against everything in the society that we live in. Children as young as five are strapped with explosives and sent into mosques, sent into markets, sent into homes. Some are actually sent back into their own homes. And the idea is to really strike out in any way that they can just to continue this carnage, this horror. They didn't even have guns. And at first, I had no idea they were Boko Haram fighters. These young men were inspired by the ideology and the rhetoric of Boko Haram. We haven't seen a single female uh, suicide bomber that has offered herself up for a suicide mission. They give you a choice. Marry a fighter or go on a mission. I told them I don't want to marry because I'm still too young. The older girls tell us they don't care how old you are. If you marry one of them, they will go to you for private affairs day and night. It's an incentive for their young men to remain in the group if they can get them wives. Uh, so they form these family units within the movement. And a lot of the girls who reject the offer of marriage are sent on missions. They were brainwashing them and telling them, you're doing this for Allah and you're going to go straight to heaven and all this stuff. They were also being told that if you don't do it, we're going to kill you. I just like the normal Qur'an and Hadith teaching. I find their teachings hard to follow. But even though I don't understand properly, I don't think that killing someone could ever be a lawful act. A lot of people have not had much education of any kind, whether it's Western or Islamic. Learning about the Qur'an doesn't mean that you're learning about Islam uh, because it's uh, teaching on the Qur'an in isolation of everything else. And the rest of the teaching is ideology. When your time comes, they tell you to look for a place filled with non-believers, like a church or a crowded marketplace. And when you detonate your bomb, they say you'll enter paradise. On my way into town, I decided to ask the first people I met to untie the vest. But the first people I met were also members of Boko Haram. I spent a month with another group of fighters in a different camp. And just as before, I refused to marry. They tied their own bomb on me and sent me right back out. This time, I ran. If I was caught again, I thought that I would surely be killed. I ran and ran. And when I stopped, I found myself on a farm. I asked the farmers to help me take off the vest and to throw it back into the forest. 
but they were afraid of me. There's nobody in the Northeast that has not had some experience with Boko Haram, whether directly or indirectly. Almost nobody. Most people have lost somebody as a result of Boko Haram. I think they look at the act rather than the girl, and they think, well, this is a young person who is willing to eliminate our whole community. How can we then take her back? These are kids, first of all, and these are victims. So you're taken against your will. You've lived with these people in horrendous conditions, away from your parents, guardians, everybody you know. Then you're strapped with explosives. You come back to the community, and by the grace of God, it doesn't go off. And now the community rejects you. It's, it's, it's very, very sad. Yeah.